Yo, what's up everybody? Thanks for tuning in today. My name is Tyler Doughty. Welcome to Relentless Biotech. Today we are talking about this product. This is called corn. This used to look like a hamburger patty. It has the flavor and texture of meat. It is a meat substitute, but the reason I wanted to do a video on it is because the way it's made I think is really cool. So corn can look like this patty or it can look like those sausages on the screen, but in each case, it's going to include as a main ingredient this thing called mycoprotein. Now, as a guy who studied fungal biology throughout my PhD, I got really interested in what exactly is mycoprotein. And I started reading and learning a lot, and I decided to share it with you here on the channel today. So I hope you'll stick around and enjoy a little bit of biotechnology. I hope you'll also enjoy that L loves tea and mustard. That's there to embarrass my girlfriend, Lucy. All right, stay tuned. Let's get into it. All right, so in order to understand corn, we need to understand this organism, which is called Fusarium. So this is a long filamentous microfungus. It is in the same family of organisms as the mushroom, but instead of forming a big visible structure, this thing is a microorganism that we can't see. And each long filamentous cell will divide into two cells, and those two cells are separate organisms. They can go their separate ways and live their life. Uh, this is similar to Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which you've probably eaten many, many times in your life. This is what makes bread rise. It's also what puts the alcohol into beer and wine. And those two cells that you see in the picture, those are separate organisms, just like Fusarium, that can go their separate ways and grow wherever they can find food. Now, what you might be thinking at this point is, if some mushrooms are edible and Saccharomyces cerevisiae is edible, what do we need fusarium for? Well, the answer is that fusarium has a higher protein content than most fungi. Uh, it is filamentous, so it, it looks a little bit like a muscle fiber, and it feels like you're eating meat when you eat it because of this filamentous shape, and it's safe to consume after some years of research. Uh, so it's a really good candidate, actually, to make a meat substitute that is high in protein and tastes like real meat. All right, so now that we know the motivation behind wanting to make corn with this product because it has a high protein content and it feels like meat when we eat it, uh, we can start to look at the process and how it works. Now, I'm not affiliated with corn, but I did read into the documentation from their FDA filing and was able to uh, figure out how their process generally works. Now, the general idea here is that this is an airlift bioreactor. It's a pretty simple device, actually, and what you can see on the screen here is that the bubbles rising up in the left-hand chamber create a flow throughout the entire system. It will push uh, media and the organism into the right-hand chamber, and it will circle back into the left chamber. Now, some amount of that fusarium that's growing in this reactor is going to drop to the very bottom, which you're seeing in this particular animation. So the concept here is that you can continuously add in uh, more food, or more media in this case, which is cornstarch and some vitamins and minerals, and you can continuously grow more and more fusarium. And over time, you'll create a lot of fusarium that has collected on the bottom of the right-hand chamber. So all of this technology works together to allow corn to make a very large amount of fusarium in a continuous cultivation uh, for about a thousand hours at a time. All right, so now that we know what an airlift bioreactor looks like, let's have a look at corn's production facility specs. So in the corn production facility, this reactor is going to have two towers that are each 50 meters tall, so giant, giant towers. Those towers are going to house 150,000 liters of media, which is the equivalent of 200 of those family-style hot tubs that your uncle has in his backyard. So this is a giant production facility, and what it allows corn to do is to create 300 kilograms of biomass per hour. And that is the equivalent of one butchered cow of biomass every single hour, uh, which we'll be uh, collecting here at the bottom of the right reactor. Now, as that collects, uh, the corn facility is going to pump some of it out so that the tank doesn't get filled up with it. Uh, and in the meantime, they're going to pump in new media here on the left. And what that allows is a continuous cultivation for a thousand hours before they stop the reaction. Now, this is really cool to think about, but it actually doesn't give you the final product because this is what fusarium would look like after it comes out. Sure, it's going to be big and clustered together, but these are not actually going to be physically connected. 
So what they do to connect uh, the fusarium cells to each other is they add in this protein, which is egg white ovalbumin. Uh, we did a, another video on this if you want to check it out, but the concept is that these proteins act like bridges between the individual cells and they stick the product together. In addition, it's worth noting that uh, the organism at this point is heat killed. So before you bind it together, you're going to use heat to kill all of the fusarium uh, and then you're going to bind them together. You're going to be adding flavors and different additives to, for instance, accomplish the right texture or to make a sausage substitute taste like sausage. Uh, and finally, you don't have to bind this together with egg white protein like I showed in this example. You could also bind it together with gluten, and that seems to be what corn does for its vegan options. So you also have corn that is uh, a true vegan um, meat substitute, and it appears to me after some brief research that that is done using gluten to bridge these cells together. Okay, so we saw some cool technology so far in this video, but it still doesn't really explain to me why I should eat corn as a meat substitute. Uh, and maybe that's not the point of this video, but I did want to present to you some of the selling points of this product. Uh, one selling point that corn brings up is that they create about one-tenth the amount of CO2 per gram of their product compared to cow meat. Uh, so it's more efficient for the environment. Uh, another concern that corn brings up is health. Uh, corn products have zero cholesterol for the most part. Some of them have some additives that add a little bit of cholesterol, but uh, really it's much less cholesterol than what we would find in cow meat, which is good for people who are worried about their heart health and their cholesterol levels. Uh, and finally, the efficiency. Uh, so corn takes about one-eighth the amount of land for feed compared to cows. So if you grow a cow, uh, you are going to need to feed it something. Uh, maybe you're going to feed it uh, grain. Uh, you would be using eight times the amount of land to create the grain for that cow compared to creating the food that the corn product is going to eat, which is cornstarch. Uh, that leads to less fuel because you're raising less plants to feed to the organism, less fertilizer, less water, and less time. Uh, personally, it doesn't matter much to me if you're interested in corn, but I think food tech is an important thing for all of us to be at least thinking about and aware of. And what I would bring up is a paradigm which is a bit of a food snowball effect. So think about ancient ancestors who were foraging and scavenging all day long to get enough food to survive. Those people had almost no time to do anything else but get enough food and find some shelter and stay alive. As technology got better, we were able to go after better sources of food with things like spears and fishing equipment, and our effort spent obtaining food got less and less. Indeed, we next uh, developed farming, which made things even more efficient, and eventually with modern farming technology, we have a very efficient system where we can create enough food for most of the people on the planet. So life is getting easier and easier, and what a lot of historians will argue is that the free time that we've gained compared to our foraging or hunting ancestors has allowed us to pursue other innovations. So a modern person, if they have an idea of how to improve housing, they can spend their whole career and all of their effort improving housing, and that benefits humanity. And that creates a snowball effect because now we have better houses, so people have to spend less time upkeeping their houses. We might develop better clothes, so people have to spend less time repairing their clothes. And over time, technology continues to make the life of an individual easier and easier and easier and frees up more time for new innovation. This creates a snowball effect. But what we need to remember is that although it's 2019 and we have modern farming techniques, the future of food production is going to be even easier. We're going to be able to create more nutritious foods with less human effort, uh, with a less impact on the environment, and what that's going to do is free up even more time for innovation so that we can have even more people thinking about how do we get to the next planet, how do we ensure the safety of our species, and how can we feed people on every corner of the planet. So although you may not be interested so much in corn, I hope you're interested in the bigger picture of how technology can impact the future uh, of humanity. Booyah! You made it to the end of the video. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, once again, I'm Tyler Dowdy. This is Relentless Biotech. Hope you learned a little bit about the technology behind this food corn. Hope you had a good time on the channel. If so, feel free to like and uh, subscribe and all that jazz. 
You can find us on Twitter at Relentless Biotech. And right now, over there, you should see a couple of videos popping up that are appropriate to this particular topic. So if you want to learn more, check those out. Uh, until next time, much love to you. Catch you later.